calling to order at 6.03. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you, members of the public. Um, the first thing I want to do is do a bunch of introductions here. We have Kyle Marie Southworth here, who has, um, she's basically running the district now, right, in this <laughs> position. Um, I just want to say, because I, I, I've been in admin work, or I was in admin work for a really long time, and it's generally a thankless job, and I just want to thank you uh, and tell you how much we appreciate everything that you do, keeping us organized, getting us what we need, making sure we're at the right place at the right time. Thank you. So, welcome to your first meeting. We'll make it as riveting as possible. <laughs> oh, I'm Han Should we go around? I think so. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm Hannah. Hi. We've emailed a lot. We've seen each other. Okay. Uh, I'm Katja. I'm the Brain Tree representative. Hi, Katja. I'm Megan. I'm the Randolph or a Randolph representative. You know me, Heather Muller. Megan Melissa. And I'm Anne, one of the Randolph reps. Uh, Sam Hooper. We've emailed Brookfield. Yes, we have. <laughs> You'll get to know our our email signatures quite well. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, I, I'm ensuring a quorum, um, and we'll start, as we always do, with public comment. Um, I'll say first, please do make sure that you sign in over there uh, so that we can uh, get your name into the record as being present. Um, I'm just going to read a little statement here. The board welcomes comments but is not able to take action on them other than to rec to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Could you be, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to by myself. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can certainly express agreements with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. With that said, I invite public comment. Yes, sir. My name is Neil Richardson. I live here in Randolph, Vermont. And if I could talk very quickly about something. Um, in 2019, there was an ethnic and social equity standards advisory working group established. And they worked on um, the coming up with new standards or reviewing the standards of um, equity in the school system. And my understanding and the the group worked very diligently and I think about once a month they would have public meetings uh, on Zoom and I used to attend the meetings and um, Amanda, Amanda used to ask me if I had anything to say and I used to tell her that I'd rather remain um, quiet and thought a fool than to open my mouth and remove all doubt. But at any rate my understanding is that this year or recently they have the state board of education has passed the education quality standards and it is now in a rulemaking process and apparently actually on october 3rd they had a public meeting for people to get comments and everything my only reason for being here tonight is to simply ask if this board is kind of up to speed and what's going is conscious of what's going on here and I know that you are and I just wanted someone from the outside to come in to let you all know that we are interested in it and when the when the thing is finalized we want to be a part of making um, be able to review and help the process of changing that's all I want to say thank you very thank much you. Appreciate your comments. And with that, I'll leave. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> we won't take Thank it you Thank you very much for listening to me. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Other public comment? I know there's other stuff on the agenda people might be here for. Online, right? No? Online? Anyone online want to make a comment? 
Okay. Going once, going twice. Uh, upcoming board trainings. Um, really, that's about, I mean, there is an upcoming one, which I think I'm going to, a webinar coming up that I'm going to take advantage of. I actually think it's November or December, but it's about budgeting. And I'm a very much 101 rudimentary elementary uh, on, on the budget process. So I think that that might be really helpful for people if you want to register for it. If you end up not being able to attend one of their webinars, you are sent a link. Well, even if you do attend, you're sent a link um, so that you can, can watch it after. Um, once we get to the um, committee reports, uh, that's when I, I ask Kyle to, to print out the draft of what me and Sarah are working on. And you'll see that there are webinar trainings um, listed there. Those are all from the webinar archives. Um, so if you go to the VSBA site, you go to resources and then webinar archives. There are some great ones there. I've you know done the P P board chair 101. There's first year of board. There's there's a whole bunch. I've picked well. I'll talk about that when we get to the committee reports. Anywho, that's why this is on the um, agenda because I want. I think every month. I want to talk about trainings that might be coming up. If someone wants to report on a training or a webinar they just did, um, I think that's how we can, it's one of the many ways we can keep ourselves accountable and. and um, oh, it sounds like there's um, issues with the speaker. Sorry to interrupt. No, not it, at all. People are not hearing well. Is, no, oh no, that's the, the. I'm not sure if it's. Camera thingy. Oh, you just left. Totally the owl. Oh, no. Oh, and he turns. He must have sensed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a break. Our the, quizzical looks. In the, uh, in the force of sideboard. I'm too curious if he does something with this. There's not a lot of buttons on there. I know. The so. newsletter response. But Google had a big update that we were. <laughs> they just say they're having problems. Here? Oh, it's really hard to hear That's those school board members speaking. It was not on mute before. I just she pushed it. <laughs> now I can't seem to. Is it on our side? There. Oh, thank you, Sam. <laughs> uh, Heidi, I saw your comment. Can you hear us now? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> is Sarah on there? Can she hear us? There was potentially maybe an echo. I don't know if that was part of it. You told my children they're not allowed to just change those. It was the gold system. Every time. It was a moment of silence waiting for you. Waiting, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> waiting patiently. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Technical difficulties. How's it going? Good. Let's see. Can you hear us now? Yes. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, I was just going to move on talking about trainings and webinars and all that good stuff. Um, board newsletter response. <coughs> remember why we put this on the agenda just if people had heard comments from our friend is that what it was Lane thank you um, from that first letter going out if there were additional things um, people were told had heard we're gonna talk about future ones no. later in the agenda other than the letter to the editor yeah other than the letter to the editor that was all I saw right yeah everyone saw the letter to the editor in the Herald 
if you didn't, um, I'm sure I can. I, I can, can find you a link. Yeah. Megan can send a link. What was the letter to the editor from us? No, no it, um, from uh, oh, really? Ron Rilling. Oh, okay. that's the one. That's a recent one. That wasn't. A, was that in response? Oh, yeah. It was in response to the letter. Yeah. 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 When I have like five back Carolyn sitting. On Probably the about show. five back. Right, mm -hmm. it was right yeah. when it was school, close to school. It was right when yeah. school started. Maybe, maybe more than that. Probably mid mid I September. I can send it to you. Yeah. I have it. Um, but it sounds like that was that was the kind of newest one since we last met. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Um, so d attached to that, next listed here is discuss possible goal change of the ownership linkage subcommittee. My question about that, and I'm one of those members, uh, is if we talked a little bit last time about having kind of regularly scheduled communications going out to the public. Um, oh, where's my notebook? Um, and we talked about specific months that it might be. And I wonder if that's something that a committee that already exists, the Ownership Linkage Committee, might be tasked with without having to necessarily change its definition or, or um, goals or focus or direction or anything like that. Do other members of the Ownership Linkage Committee have thoughts on that or anyone who's on not that? on that committee? I'm on that? I don't think you are. You are not on that. Is I not on that one? No. no. On that one. Which one did I replace for Scott? That was oh, was that, that was portrait of the graduate? That was por that was POG. That was with you. Was POG was part of uh, yeah. So, so yeah, you're so yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was ownership. <laughs> so we just haven't met okay. in a long time. We have not Correct. Met in a long okay. Time. Correct. Okay. Oh, here it is. We thought about an August letter, a January letter, and a and a June letter <laughs> to the public. Is that something? Let me put it, how do I want to put it? Does that, do members of that subcommittee feel that that's something we could take on? Composing those, bringing them to the board for approval? Yeah, because I think they're going to follow a, a pretty like standard format of what we talk about. Mm -hmm. So just okay. do that. I'm good with that. Great. And Rachel can edit them. Can and Rachel can <laughs> edit them. <laughs> Is there anyone? Well, and, and because now that we know that that's something that that committee is taking on, if there's someone who wants to join that committee or lead that committee, um, because it's a you know a new task, that's allowed, and uh, you can talk to me privately about it or not, or publicly. Um, so for clarification, yeah. that was Katya was the chair. You were on it. I was on it. That's not for you. I was on yep. chair, and I'm on it. Mm -hmm. So I'll get off of it. That's a lot of people. <laughs> if, if, if uh, somebody else wants to be on it, or if we just, I mean, a three person, our committee's a three person committee. I think a bunch of them are three. Well, Bob's the majority. If somebody wants to. And that was the third Wednesday of the month. That's when we were doing them, the third I Wednesday believe so. at 5 30. Yep. But we start that up this month then, next week. Mm -hmm. So then we need to warn it, correct? Correct. 48 hours. Yep. When are these new letters going in? Beginning of school, end of school? January. August, had, January, and June. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, so we would want to, like for a January letter, we'd want to have something for the board to initially look at in November <coughs> so that we can have so everybody can have some time to weigh in, make suggestions, veto. So then, yes, we need to meet next week. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, to have that ready yeah. by the November meeting. So and we need to remind ourselves to warn that. How many days in advance? Forty-eight, 48 hours. hours. Forty-eight for regular. Yeah. Um, and just a reminder: subcommittees don't have to only meet once a month. We can meet more often do as they? needed. They can be remote. But just to review what we've, uh, everybody's found out, not only warned, but um, recorded, uh, and a link, uh, a 
available. So, so really easy to record. Like like just minutes did. or it needs to be like physically recorded? We did both at our last. Um, Oh, but, no, but, we do but that's all right because we weren't really. Yeah. It was all in executive session. Okay. okay, and minutes can be very brief. I mean, it's you know, discussing the subcommittee work. It can be as brief as that, but they do need to be treated as these mm -hmm. meetings are their public meetings. Okay. So thank you, Anne, for d yeah. the thinking about the number of people on there and, and stepping off. And I'm sure there will be another committee to you put you back on. I don't know if you need me on that committee either. It's up to you. Newsletter committee? I don't think so. I okay. mean, it's, you're not disinvited, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to feel <laughs> I'm tough. Or I'm uninvited. <laughs> He was in today. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. He's in town. Yes. Cool. Yeah, you definitely don't need me if you have been. Why do we need that? Well, he kind of, we throw him. What happened with the first newsletter is Chelsea and I kind of threw him ideas, and he kept, right? And he composed yeah. something. We talked about this last time, though. So he did compose it, but then we changed, like, a lot of it. so much of it. Like, maybe really it condensed it. And, yeah, and then we thought maybe it wasn't worth his time. Now that I'm rethinking. Oh, interesting. Well, let's not say yay or nay, period, the end right now. Mm -hmm. I think next week yeah, we, we can, can talk that. about if that's something. Because you're right, it can be in a similar format. Yeah. So maybe we don't need that. Assistance, but there is a cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, does, he does the annual reports for the district as well, so we've, we've got yeah. them on for that. Cool. <clears throat> All right, we'll discuss that next week. Um, moving on to monitoring. Wow, we're way ahead. Please Shh. tell us. No, no, it's no, I know it's a good thing, but also <laughs> if anybody feels like I'm just skimming over things or, or rushing too much. Um, I can drag things and I'm getting <laughs> okay. First read of EL reports 2.1 and 2.2. 2.1 is treatment of students, parents, guardians, and community. 2.2 is treatment of staff. So 2.1 two um, is really ensuring that we've got policies, protocols, expectations in place. Um, just to make sure that uh, you know the stakeholders are being treated consistently and, and fairly. Um, 2.2 treatment of staff is really about making sure that we've got some sort of master agreement in place for every category of staff that we have. Um, that really kind of explains you know what their roles are, what their responsibilities are to the district, and what the district's responsibilities are to them as well. Um, and it also uh, makes sure that we are doing emergency training with the staff, you know, mo most specifically, you know, the fire drills and uh, what used to be locked down drills, but options-based drills now. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Great. Okay. In general. Um, this is the first reading, but does anyone have questions or comments at this point? I did have a question on 2.2. Um, under provision two, it says um, right before, it, <clears throat> right at the end, it meets with the union currently twice a month to discuss concerns and ways to work together. Are, are you are you currently meeting with the union? I know there was some discussion about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. with Which is actually it's good. Yeah, because yeah. I know that there have been maybe in the past the meetings weren't happening as regularly. Okay. Yeah. We meet every other Monday. Great. But that's great to know. Yeah. And they've graciously um, allowed Chelsea and I to. We just started last time. Okay. Kind of sitting in and yeah, observing. I mean, we're not really participating, yeah. but That's, I'm glad to hear that. <clears throat> Other questions? Uh, oh, I just, Lane, real quick. I noticed on the policy and procedures link, there's some, there's three hyperlinks in the bottom of that page that are uh, redirecting to a 404 not, page not found. Okay, it's like board policies and then um, HIPAA and so it may just be from the new website and you just need to get that real. Okay. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go through and click on each one and check them. That's a good, I appreciate you bringing that no, up. Thank you. 
they had some, it was an odd summer. Uh, most of the major software that we use, yeah. including this, everybody did updates on. Yeah. So we didn't get kind of problems. No, I just the board. thought. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Thank yeah, you. good stuff. Uh, like some, and you said policy specifically. Yeah, policy and, and then I think all three of those hyperlinks at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you both. Um, update on the status of the 22-23 ENDS report. So we did, um, the state did get out the last round of data, um, which was the grade nine data just recently, um, probably about a week ago. Um, they had some glitches that they found in the earlier data from the elementary schools, which have now been fixed and we're getting ready at the end of this week to send out the individual student reports. What it means is I've got 99% of what I need to be able to produce the ENDS report and um, hopefully have it in everybody's hands for the November meeting um, at that point in time. Yeah. And some of it will be um, the actual data, some of it is the, uh, the ENDS like you know, social studies where you know, this year they are working on creating um, their DBQs they call them, but their essay questions that they're using to be able to measure student performance. Should, should be also to go into one. Great. Um, I had asked to put this on the agenda and update on the easement request just because we had a visit um, from Mr. Garrow in, at our, our last meeting at public comment. So I just asked for any updates in the past month. Yeah, we had um, followed up um, with Mr. Garrow, um, went out, uh, talked with him. It was a little terse at the beginning. It actually was very productive at the end. Um, he was concerned, he didn't feel that the folks had followed through on the plan, the, the excavator and whatnot, we took a look at it, they had, um, and then he asked for some minor changes, um, removal of one of the stop signs and moving one of the other stop signs if it was possible a little bit closer to the road, um, as well as uh, pruning back um, his apple tree so it's not getting damaged as vehicles are going through. Um, agreed, talked with them, said, hey, you know, we're in agreement on this. Um, um, I'll put it to an email uh, to you when you respond back that we're in agreement, you know, we'll get the work done. I have not heard back. Um, he is typically out in his yard. Usually I see him if I'm walking, you know, to RTCC or if I'm walking over to RES. I have not seen him recently, um, so I'm a little worried, but I'm going to check in um, and try to, you know, I've been waiting to kind of see him and bump into him to say, hey, you know, are we still good? That's kind of where things are sitting at this point in time. Okay, yeah. great. It sounds like then, yeah, all of the concerns that he had were yeah. attended to. Um, okay, it's time for uh, an informational discussion. Um, I want to start with uh, kind of an overview. We don't need to read it, um, but policy F2, non-discriminatory mascots and school branding. If, Heather, you want to just kind of give a, a broad overview of what is a compulsory policy yes. for school districts. Um, toward the end of 2022, the state of Vermont compelled all school districts to adopt a mandatory policy, policy F2, non-discriminatory mascots and school branding. Um, our board reviewed this policy um, in December and it was adopted on January 11th, 2023 in compliance with the mandate. Um, the language is exactly as provided by the um, state and includes a compulsion that the superintendent or designee shall assist the board in its review of the district school branding to ensure compliance and that it specifically references no mascots shall include stereotypes, likenesses, features, symbols, traditions, or other characteristics um, specific to people of any race, creed, color, national origin, sexual orientation, gender identity, or of any person or group of persons or organizations associated with the repression of others. Uh, based on this policy, um, we, did work across the district to ensure compliance. Great, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. It's a great brief overview of the policy. Now, as this um, 
relates to a question that was raised again at that last meeting in public comment about the RES mascot. <clears throat> um, if if we so we'll start with the board kind of chatting about it or concerns thoughts anything like that how it relates back to that policy and also if I don't know Lane if you can speak to the the um, process by which it's it's being done or maybe when we get to Melinda Melinda could talk a little bit about the process um, but first just how it relates to that policy so this is why it came up right why wizards um, yes became a concern wizards became a concern because even the hat could be seen as a symbol of a wizard which could be interpreted as a group of persons associated with the repression of others mm -hmm. typically it's a symbol of a white man in power that can cause harm to others and is also associated with some um, an organization which I'd rather not I an organization where in a high level of discrimination someone would earn the title of wizard right so we made the decision that we should review that mascot and possibly replace it okay and can you list the we in that you and Lane and Melinda. Melinda, great. At the time, Kara Houston. Right, okay. Um, did we involve the parent advisory group? We had, we had talked about this back in the spring with the advisory group. Parent advisory group. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, great, okay. So well, you, you had input from individuals outside of immediate administration? If you're saying a parent advisory group, okay. just trying to get up her presentation for the next. I apologize. That's all I got. That's, okay. So, board members, are there questions either about interpretations of that policy, um, how it relates to the RES mascot? So, this. This derived from within a review of our policy, not a complaint from outside the community. Correct. Right. Right. That's cool. Okay. At this time, we have, there has not been a complaint okay. that I that I know of. Yeah, if I remember, the policy does require a uh, review. No, it's just periodic review. A period, yeah. So periodically so review and provide recommendations, recommendations for necessary updates. updates. Yeah. Okay. So, where is this um, at right now? Has there been a recommendation made? Is I, there? I can speak to that if you like. Um, I don't know if you want me to sit back here or move up. <laughs> Whatever. Um, you know. I'm Melinda Robinson. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, so we had um, we had reviewed in the spring with our parent teacher organization and talked to our uh, a lot of our staff. Um, at that time, it didn't seem like it was an issue that a lot of, we didn't feel like it was an issue. Then I believe it was the summer that Lane and Heather said we needed to do more of a thorough review of that and perhaps even just consider not having the wizard as the mascot. Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah. And that so we came into the school year with the idea that we weren't going to have the wizards, that we would adopt a new mascot. and then we did get some community response to that that really they felt the mascot had been around for a long time we hadn't had um, pushback from that and wanted to revisit that idea lane came a few about a month ago maybe a few weeks ago and said that really we didn't have to completely give up the idea of the wizards but we should do a thorough vetting of it and make sure that we were following the process carefully I went back to the parent-teacher organization, did a thorough discussion with them. None of them seemed to be up, uh, in concern with that. I put it in my newsletter also with asking for pros and cons, anyone who felt strongly either way to give me feedback. And that newsletter also went out to the greater community through the Front Porch Forum, so anyone in the greater community might be able to give me feedback on that. 
Um, I've gotten nothing but positive responses towards the wizards and not a single negative response towards it. Since we Towards keeping it. Um, Sorry, they, everyone, positive towards keeping positive it. Positive towards keeping okay. it, yes. Um, so the my teacher leadership organization that um, in the building thought that since we'd started the democratic process of letting the kids suggest um, a mascot, um, that we should continue that democratic process where we allow the vetted final decisions on what we could the kids could vote on, we would include the wizard in that as well and let them have a vote um, for, there's about, it's down to three, ravens, capybaras, and wizards. Um, capybaras, <laughs> yes. Um, and one thing that we tried to strongly rec like explain was we wanted a strong reason for the mascot, not just some random thing, but what does it really represent for Randolph Elementary? So we've tried to like weed out the ones that it was didn't have a strong meaning for Randolph. So we're hoping to hear from the board if you have any concerns with that, and we'd like to move forward with a vote from our student body um, in the next week. Through through the democratic process, how has the student body felt about the um, opportunity to change or keep? I think they've been interested in the idea of um, exploring new options, but for the most part, a lot of the kids were saying they really liked the wizards, they didn't know why we weren't doing the wizards anymore, we've got a song, we've got our wizard of the month, so they, I think there was a strong um, feel that we should still explore keeping the wizards. Um, I would say that if, if we did decide to go, if the vote went that we were going to go with the wizards, I would still would like to rebrand it so that, as Heather mentioned, that the, the, icon, the icons of that wizard would be very thoughtful and careful not to represent something that might be taken wrong. So, mm -hmm. I'll take any thoughts or questions. So I guess it's my understanding that the vote is not with the school board, but the vote is with the principal. Students. The students. students. Mm -hmm. um, I was just hoping to hear from you if you were comfortable with me putting wizards up for one of the options to vote for, if there was any concern with that. I mean, I think there's inherent, it, it, it does leave us a little bit open for criticism in the future, even though we haven't received it mm -hmm. <clears throat> thus far. Um, but, and from my personal standpoint, I think if, the community is behind wizards and the students are behind wizards and and if you can change the uh the icon or the imagery and the logo so it doesn't evoke um persons with power over others mm -hmm. um then it seems yeah I, I i mean i can only speak for myself but i would say yes proceed with your with your democratic process. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think imagery is huge. The, the, the word itself is also problematic. I mean, the title is also problematic. Um, personally, I think my daughter would disown me if I said keep it out of the vote because the song is what she cited as the reason. She didn't want to learn a new song. Um, um, but I do think, yes, I, I think it does leave us open in the future for criticism. I also think that having this conversation and going about the process thoughtfully and agreeing that it would be one of the choices um, is uh, responsible um, and you know could be presented as this is what we chose to do. Now, will we have to revisit it? D we, due to a complaint? We might. Sure. I, I don't think by putting it into the vote that we're trying to buck the system or, mm -hmm. or um, you know, sneak something past the policy or anything like that. You know, I'd think about the hat. I'd think about the gender. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd think about can it be 
sure it's the word wizards, but can the imagery actually not include a human at all? It's mm -hmm. a wand, you know. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of ways to go to go about it. Um, I also want to be sure to include the public in this discussion because that was listed there. But yes. Uh, the only comment just on the policy, the, the policy does allow for an appeal. So, you know, if a decision is made and folks aren't happy with it, then the community members can always, um, you know, put in for an appeal. Hmm. So. But at least some good work will have already been done on a backup scenario. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, I mean, that's, you know, it's all time well spent. Mm -hmm. So in preparation, I just Googled about wizards because I was like, okay. And I thought it was going to be related to that it was somebody's creed, that it would, that we were, because it's witches or, I, 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 but then I also noticed that like in the definition of wizard, because the way my kids looked at being wizards was the second definition that I found that said somebody who's very clever in a, in a specific area. So um, I I feel comfortable with it with it with going ahead because if there is someone is feeling offended by it, there is the ability to um, ask for redress and and. Uh, her. What does the process look like when, if you guys go to a vote and you said the ravens? Or? Ravens and capybaras. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and assume that ravens might be the, the second <laughs> one here. <laughs> so, say the ravens wins in the vote, um, what's the process for appeal at that point? Same same thing. Any but, community member can appeal. The, well, well on that, on this on case, if it's, if it's not based on this, then it would be your conflict resolution protocols that you have. It would be a so would talk with mm -hmm. Melinda first, mm -hmm. and then take it up the chain. Okay. Yeah. But it I wouldn't be it, an appeal based on this based policy. On <laughs> I guess I just hope right. if the if the community did back Ravens. Well, oh, Ra Raven has a, an American Indian component. Say, that's the reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Native American component with, so. with ravens and symbolism. There's a lot of different symbiology. What, what was yeah. the connection to Randolph with ravens? Because you liked, said you made them. Uh, we, this was a student-driven <laughs> um, idea. It came from one of the classrooms. They mm. liked the alliteration of it, Randolph Ravens. Mm. <laughs> And, oh, and like just the, the capybaras, yeah. I'm just curious about that. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, last year, the Red Clover books featured a capybara as one of the um, one of the books, and it's all about how capybaras can get along with everyone. They they that they um, are kind and they're gentle and they they take anybody in and make them feel welcome. That's part of that book. So. I thought that was well, lovely. That's very cute. I thought that was lovely. <laughs> we had to shut down the, like the campaigning on it though. It got a little aggressive. Wasn't as kind as David <laughs> <laughs> brought out. <laughs> what, one more point going back to okay, if it is capybaras or the ravens that went out in the vote, not a complaint against. Uh, any issue with one of those two logos, but what if a complaint comes in that the community that a community member didn't want the change from wizards? I, I guess the board needs to decide if under um, administrative responsibilities number three that this is a prohibited school branding, and if it's not prohibited, then let the kids vote. They did a fair process. They included you know, the most important stakeholders in the process, and that makes the sense. And sometimes the vote doesn't always go the way that people want. We might be surprised. Yeah. Might be the Catholic Bears. <laughs> <laughs> so if the, the students vote and it comes out the Wizards, is everybody good to go with that being the... Unless a community member files a complaint. And then that's a different process and yeah. we have to look at it again. <laughs> okay. Are there members of the public that would like to um, 
weigh in on this discussion? <laughs> Spotlights on me. <laughs> um, Bethany Soloway, Randolph Center. Um, I just want to thank you for putting this on the agenda tonight and discussing it. My biggest issue was that I felt like the decision was being made without any discussion with the public. Um, and so the fact that it's come up and a lot more thought has been put into it, you all have talked about it. I appreciate that. The capybaras win. I'm not going to file a complaint. <laughs> but, you know, my concern is this is a third grader coming home campaigning for capybaras, and then she came the other day. She's like, I really would rather keep the wizards. <laughs> so I think they, I just worry the kids kind of were swayed a little early, and now I don't, I don't know. So I just, that part worries me a little bit, but I'm not going to complain anymore, no matter what they pick, even though I think it's really silly. <laughs> I thank you guys for looking at it. <laughs> Can I just add to that? I think um, capybaras aren't native to Vermont, are they? No, no so they're not. They're rodents, yeah. Yeah, and they're yeah, rodents. They're rodents. <laughs> Ravens, you know. <laughs> 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 I, think I think there can be something choice. wrong with everything. <laughs> Literally, that was, well, Chris Armstrong would like to be the mascot, but... <laughs> But, yeah. I saw the sign upstairs. So We've mixed that one. <laughs> yeah, well, he did. That's yeah, a person. Can't be a person. person. Can't, be a person. Can't be a person. Good experience in, de in democratic it, it, decision making. So we'll see how they feel. <clears throat> so when will the vote happen? Well, I'm going to put out um, a last um, a last appeal to um, the classrooms to see if anyone else wanted to put their um, ideas in. Only like. Two classrooms have really given me their thoughts. Um, there's been a lot of discussions around those thoughts. Um, and then I will, if there is more than these two, if it's like a lot more all of a sudden come in, then I'll have our um, leadership team narrow it down to two or three, mm -hmm. or probably three just to make it a fair round. And we will vote by next week. So that's Great. where we'll be. You going to do multi-voting? Yeah. Rank choice. Rank voting. Rank choice voting. Right, really. Oh, well, we got a tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, everyone, for that um, discussion. And this segues so seamlessly into um, a, an update just from the Randolph Elementary School in general. Sure. And uh, this is new to the principals here. It's, well, I think it was done a while ago, but it's been a long time since this has been done, so I don't know if I've overkilled what I'm presenting, but there you have it. Um, I'm going to grab mine so I can see it. Um, you, want, you, want the, you can have my computer and you can... Flip. It's all right. I can, okay. If you want to just turn to the first, the first round. Um, so our focus... The focuses that we have for FOCI for the year, um, as an admin team, myself and Mindy Beth Pike, our, my new assistant principal, is really looking at a few specific things. We're really trying to hammer home collecting important data regularly and using that data to inform our instruction and to have goal-driven interventions put in place for those students who are struggling in any area whether it's academic or social-emotional. We would like to take a proactive approach to social-emotional learning and regulation, and we wanted to um, focus on may making sure we maximize our time for instruction in the classroom. So I want to unpack each of those just quickly for you. The goal-driven instruction decision-making. This is based on assessment calendar that is put out by the district where we have specific benchmark assessments that we do periodically throughout the year. Um, we have created as an admin team a Kid Talk protocol where each team gets together and they bring forth kids that they're concerned about, whether it's data driven concerns or it's concerns other than just the data shows. They come together. We have a protocol in place for how we are unpacking that data, how we're unpacking what the needs are. We're creating goal driven. Um, um, instruction for those students, creating intervention if they need it, and then we're regularly coming back and checking in with where they are at. Our goal is always to get the students where they should be um, academically. Um, we also have a, our new PLC plan with 
um, team leaders. We have on each grade team, there is a leader that is helping to direct the um, professional learning communities that are taking the lead on that. And they're really focusing on that first instruction in ELA and math. How can we beef up that, that initial instruction and work on um, improving our curriculum? And finally, we are working on this with our intervention and tutoring schedule to be certain that we're meeting all the needs. So we have, thanks to a lot of grant writing, um, we have the opportunity for a lot of tutoring and busing for those students that are getting tutoring after school, and we're going to be starting that first cycle of tutoring next week. So buses will be available as well. Um, the next one is our proactive approach to SEL growth in the building. We are in kindergarten through second grade focusing on second step, which is a um, research-based um, in program that helps students learn how to work with others, how to improve their own um, ability to self-regulate, and it's a great opportunity in the kindergarten through second to really do some role playing and help them at, a, at the classroom level to um, improve their ability to self-regulate. Second um, step, you said that was called? Second step, it's called. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And third through six, we're working on um, continuing with a program we started a few years ago called Leader in Me. This is a, another research-based program that um, gets students looking at the habits of highly effective people. It's, it took Stephen Covey's work and has brought it down to a student level. And it's teaching the students how do they become leaders of their own learning, of their own life, how do they set goals for themselves, how do they um, create actions based on those goals? How do they work with others? It's a really powerful program that we're excited to be continuing with our third through sixth grade. We were doing it last year with kindergarten through second, and it just was a little bit much for our kindergarten through second, so we've um, gone back to second step instead. We do, we're continuing our PBIS protocols with monthly goals for our staff to focus on with those PBIS goals. We've started a new screener this year across the district called DESA. It's actually just in the elementaries. They're doing a different one, I believe, in the high school and middle school. DESA is a screener for all of our students so that our teachers can um, do, through pretty quick questions, really identify students that they're concerned with their social-emotional growth and learning. And then within that program, there is interventions that we can put into place that will address specifically how to help those students. Um, we also continue here at Randolph with our RISE and our SEL small group interventions and we've now started this year monthly yoga sessions with our students which is a great way for them again to learn how to self-regulate themselves. We are we took a real strong stance on maximizing our instruction in the classroom this year. Um, Mindy Beth and I really looked at every single schedule for every single teacher, gave suggestions. We were looking for specific things. Did they have 75 minutes of math? Did they have 90 minutes of ELA, which includes writing and reading? Do they have 30 minutes of word work every uh, four times a week? Do they have 60 to 90 minutes of science in their um, weekly schedule? And do they have 30 minutes of designated SEL um, work in their schedule. We created those. We helped them to really set that goal that that's what we're looking for. And as we do our walkthroughs, we're looking to see, we know what their schedule is supposed to be. Is the schedule being followed? And if they're struggling in some area, how can we help? What can we do to help support that, um, maximizing that instruction? Um, STEM. Wait, you didn't tell us about STEM. What? Sorry, oh, he, he was <laughs> going my fault. Um, we are. We've also been working hard in the last few years to increase our STEM mm -hmm. and our eco in, um, eco integration in throughout the school. We have a designated STEM teacher three days a week in the building who is working K through six, and she's doing a nice job of integrating that science, technology, math, engineering. She's also working with a committee of teachers on eco. Um, classrooms, out, outdoor classroom work, going into nature, using that nature to learn, and she's um, embedding in those eco classroom times. We have three of our grade teams who have 
weekly or bi-weekly designated eco times in their schedule where they're out integrating that science and doing um, hands-on problem solving in the environment. And the other thing that's been just a big, huge uh, piece for me when I started as admin, I, it was important to me to build the leadership capacity of our students. That, so our students are given the opportunity to apply for leadership roles. They um, take their job applications, they fill them out, they turn them in, they get hired for different jobs, and they do a nice job with that. They, they take a lot of pride in those leadership roles that they have. Um, and I could tell that it was really working last year because instead of me just um, putting forth jobs that they could apply for, they started to come to me for jobs that they thought should happen and committees that they thought should be taking place. For example, I had one fourth grade girl get a group with, together and come and advocate for a cleanup committee. And she took the managerial role of the cleanup committee and managed a group of third and fourth graders week, weekly on the playground. Um, we had another group that wanted to do a writing club and they came and asked for the um, ability to apply for, to have a job posting for a writing club. So I think that's really shown that they have taken on this role of leadership and they are starting to understand what that means. Um, and just wanted to share some upcoming events. Our PTO in the last, it's only two years old, but it's been great having that parent-teacher organization and they brought a lot to our community here at school. We have a PTO movie night and pumpkin carving on October 20th coming up. We have our Thanksgiving feast, which we've always had, but the PTO has changed that so much for us because they come in, they help to um, prep in the kitchen, they help to serve, they help to clean. It was the smoothest Thanksgiving feast ever last year. <laughs> um, we have our school harvest gathering, which is something we had started last year where each classroom um, creates food to bring together for this harvest gathering and we sat in the gym and we were all feasting on food that the classrooms had made and brought together. In December we are continuing with our holiday market which is a strong tradition we've had here to help with the farm to school um, movement in our district and coming in January we have a PTO steam night with a mini golf course that's coming into the building and it's going to be followed up with a lot of steam activities. So I'll take any questions or Thoughts or concerns? <laughs> the echo, the echo classroom, is that integrated into your farm to school program? It, it to some extent it is. Um, more, it's more integrated into our science curriculum. We're trying to really beef up that science curriculum, so that it's more integrated into that. But your farm to school is still robust. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to say I appreciate the application process for those. <laughs> jobs. Um, I really, that it's written yeah. um, and they have to think about the qualities they're bringing and yeah. I really appreciate it. And it's that. fun, um, some we've had so many people apply that I've made them do job interviews. They loved that. <laughs> they loved the job <laughs> interviews. So Cool. So I'm just curious, um, what's the gender equity in the leadership? Yeah, are you seeing mostly female students, nope. or is it a cross section? On it's pretty students? balanced. It's balanced. Yeah, awesome. very balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say it's interesting. We have um, our third and fourth grade get very excited about the leadership jobs, and I have probably a stronger um, applicant pool from our third and fourth grade team. And that's over the last three years. I've noticed that they mm -hmm. just get really excited that about that age group. <clears throat> yeah. By the, the time they hit, kids by the time they like hit six, off. they're too cool for that. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been fun. Um, in the just coming off the heels of this pandemic, these world wars, socioeconomic wealth gap, homelessness in this community, mm -hmm. food insecurity. Are you seeing um, in below average, average or above average uh, social emotional uh, rate of uh, I think your student we've, body? We've all, all the schools in the state and the country and the world probably have seen a, an increase in social emotional needs mm -hmm. after the pandemic. We are certainly seeing that here at RES. Um, a lot of needs that we're trying to all meet and it's hard. And so DESA is the, is is the 
protocol in place to screen and identify. Yes, we're trying to. Um, we've been doing a lot of work with social emotional needs, but we needed something that was going to allow us to do it in a more scientific way, like a more like mm-hmm. really looking at everybody and not just the squeaky wheel, mm-hmm. so that we can start to see who really needs some help. And what I love about the DESA is they have lessons that the can be done in the at the universal level in the classroom. Let's say we see this need for all of our students, we can do these lessons and they have specific ones that they can do. And then there's also small group instruction that can be done if we need a true intervention. So all of those tiers and layers of intervention can happen from the universal all the way up through to intensive needs. Cool. Yeah. And yeah, the high school is using a, is a it's Wayfinder that the high Wayfinder. school is using. It's a s- similar program, but it's a, a, a little bit different company. It does, does the same thing. What's it called? Uh, Wayfinder. So I have a very specific, specific question. And if you don't know it, don't worry about it. Um, there have been a couple of articles now. One Time Magazine had it, Seven Days just had a recent <coughs> article about reading instruction. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about more of a structured literacy approach. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they even mentioned Doreen Dorfman, and I'm pretty sure she was working in our district. Oh. I do know the name. Point. Yeah, yeah, she was. Um, yeah. But anyway, it's do, do we do that here? Absolutely. Oh. Um, okay. We've been really focused on the science of reading for okay. quite a few years now. Um, that's when I said um, that we needed 30 minutes four times a week of word work. That is based on that directly yeah. on that, that science of reading. Like yes, that you were probably yeah. doing that. Like yeah. Under double. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Any other questions? Um, the students that have needs, extra needs. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you have enough staff to help them? On any given day, that answer is different. (laughs) (laughs) There's days when it feels a little overwhelming. We have a really strong SEL um, group here who work really closely together to meet those needs. And there's days when we feel a little overwhelmed by some of those needs. But we work hard to manage them, to be proactive and try to get to the root of what is causing some of these difficulties rather than just putting a Band-Aid on it. So that can be hard. It can bring up a lot of emotions for the kids. And you have to go there to get them past having to have a Band-Aid constantly, if that makes sense. What percentage (laughs) of students is that? Of the really intense needs? Of the student body. Out of, I was just, it's interesting, we were just doing it with my SEL team um, a few days ago. We were really digging into who do we think are our um, biggest needs for Tier 2 and Tier 3 um, SEL support. And I would say, I mean, I could give you the exact number, but it's probably about between 25 and 28 Um, kids that are really on those higher tier two, tier three, pretty heavy needs of intervention for social emotional learning. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the entire student body? or Out of the entire student body. Yeah, I mean, I can... And what's the number of staff members that SEL... We have, it is um, five staff members that are really zeroed in completely on social emotional learning. We have our two behavioral interventionists. We have two um, uh, master level clinicians at our RISE program. And we have our guidance counselor who is a 0.8 position. So, and they work, they work tirelessly for these kids. Yeah. And all the other people that help pick up the yeah. nurses and yeah. the oh, yeah. I mean, and the, yeah. Yeah, I mean, those five can, honestly do it alone some days. We all are digging in together to help some of our needs. This summer alone, we got um, three new students in from outside of the area with intense needs that we're having to help them to build relationships, to unpack their the, the needs that they have and try to figure out what we can put into place to help support them. So, and that's on top of the ones that we have already had. So. Do you have concerns about burnout? 
definitely. Staff yeah, these, the September was a point of real hardship for our SEL team. They were running ragged. I, I, I told Lane and Heather that they were just running ragged in September. I worry about them. How, how did the um, classroom teachers uh, manage, how are they feeling about the management of? I think they feel supported. They feel like they've got a lot of um, people to help them. They're working hard at a you know, at the universal level to figure out what they need to do to help the students be successful and how to meet those, some of those really tough needs right there in the classroom without having to leave the classroom to get support outside. But it's, um, it's tiring for them too, yeah. How has attendance been? So in the month and a half? Great, I mean we've had, we traditionally have very good attendance. Mm -hmm. And at, it's interesting, we've had some students who have had very poor attendance that we've had to work with. We've had to do um, coordinated service plan meetings for them. And those students, all of a sudden this year, are coming to school and are here every single day. So I'm not sure if it's been a, you know, we've gotten past the pandemic enough and they've started to feel more confident, but that's improved. Well, Melinda, you were the first of at least this iteration of the board to, to be visited by a principal, and this was awesome. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thanks. Um, the opportunity to have you present, but then to just field yes. questions. This was us. fun. Thank you. That was good. That was great. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, all right. Let's move on to. Um, our self-monitoring, um, our compliance with board governance policy 4.7. I know that the um, grid uh, didn't make it in, but I think that that's probably me needing to share them with you, um, and I apologize for that. Uh, this one I figured would, I didn't put much time on the agenda for it because um, it's, it's not as meaty as some of the others that we've um, assessed ourselves on. Uh, does anyone want to jump in and, and talk about how they think we're doing? Um, funds being being allocated so that we can <clears throat> meet our standards of governance. So we've got ten we, grand. Yeah, we maintain um, a budget this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. That will be uh, we spent three hundred and sixty three of it so far. And so usually it depends upon and sixty-three dollars of it. Um, if you decide that you're going to do more, you know, board training and things like that, then mm -hmm. we probably would want to up it a little. Um, if you're going to do what you've been consistent with over the last couple of years, the, the ten thousand is, is probably more than enough. Well, and we haven't yet um, fully paid the uh, evaluation mm. uh, leading process, right? right? So we know. Yeah, it's small. Yeah, it's so is that taken out of this? Fund. So we paid 363 plus 1500 oh, out of 10,000. Skunk. skunk. Yeah, there's oh. a skunk right there. I have a skunk living in my skunk. horse barn <laughs> and under my porch. Under my porch. They're <laughs> everywhere. You see one of them? Yeah. yeah I thought it was a one. cat at first, and then I was like, oh my gosh, skunk. So on, on the 363, is that our like PR stuff with community engagement? That so. it was probably, I would guess it was the Ben Merrill. It was Ben. Yeah. Oh, Ben. Okay. Would be my guess without, without looking and checking with Robin. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like we are, Larry, we discuss any trainings or any things that we may be spending <coughs> that money on. We vote on it. We have board input. If it's prudent to spend that or not on certain things. So mm -hmm. I think we do well with this one. Gas money to fairly. <laughs> so um, are we deciding what trainings we're doing or are we just saying we do this? Well, you it, have a it, suggestion right here on this, on this, right? This is a suggestion. Yeah, I mean, when we get to the annual okay. agenda, that's right when you came in today. I was talking about, and these are free, these webinars on the on the VSBA oh. website, um, and they keep an archive. So I've, on the annual agenda, tried to tie it to kind of what we'd be doing for that meeting 
you know, coming into rearranging the board, there's a webinar on. Anyway, those are free trainings. If someone brought to, or you want a request of me to research a more in-depth or intense training on any particular topic, I, I don't mind doing that research. And then, you know, that would be a cost incurred. But the kind of training, there, there's training available that I think is effective that doesn't necessarily cost us money. And then we spent this in the past on when we had... Um, we had Susan. Mm -hmm. the, right. And we had Jackie. Yeah. And we had Jackie. Yeah. So and uh, Winston. Winston. We spent that on Winston. Oh, that was, yeah, that was that. That same one, yeah. Thing. So is this a move it or lose it budget, or is it we just keep... Uh, this is just part of planning for next year. So it would be finalized when you do your vote on January, whatever the date is for that board meeting. Um, but usually, usually yeah. ten grand seems to cover it. And if you go a little over, there's other places that that you know we can pull from. Um, if, if you know if you're planning on some major thing that's going to cost thirty or forty thousand, that's what we'd want to want to know and adjust for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ten feels good in my mind. I yeah. wouldn't go lower in case we do want to do more. Of group hired in consultant training or anything like that. So I just want to point out that, um, first of all, if we are in compliance with number three here because we are establishing the cost of its governance budget, but we're also skipping ahead to when we actually determine that number, um, which we're doing tonight as well. <laughs> no, no, hey, let's, let's. And you don't have to have birds free with one. Yeah, let's go on. Yeah, close spin it's it a close. little bit. It's close. No stones. Um, I mean, that's fine for us to, to jump because we're still in the same category of the agenda. Um, if, if anyone feels differently about that number of 10, um, we can have a discussion about it. Is there anyone who's concerned about that number? Well, I think we should have a discussion about do we want to have, so we just came from our meeting and the gal we were working with was recommending some training. I don't know if it would have would be if it would have to pay, but what, what she meeting was that? Um, the, the superintendent uh, evaluation. Oh. But she was definitely saying that across the state what she's seeing is that boards need training on how to govern, right? Yes. Basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I think is probably true in our case as well, mm -hmm. since yeah. we, I forget to warn meetings and things like that happen. Um, so just having that would be a good idea. And also clearly defined roles of boards and superintendents as another training. Mm -hmm. And then there was another third one that I, I didn't write down. It's more open meeting was was one she mentioned. Yeah. I have them in my notes. Did she know. give any like estimate on how much those cost per No. No. Isn't open meeting law what I what like governing? Like part yes. of, part of yeah. It's part of, and there's yeah. there's a free training. There's an open the, if you watch this one you get it. You, you get, get it. Yeah. The whole thing. <clears throat> and the one suggested for oh, on here? that we would yeah. watch and Perfect. discuss in yeah. November is the governance core. Yeah. Um Okay. Yeah, there's, some, there's is, also some yeah. good stuff in the SBA toolkit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Watch some of those. Yeah, I mean, what I was trying to do here, and we can we can definitely change which webinars because Anne has seen a lot. I've seen a few. Um, we can change which they are. I think it's important, at least personally, for it to be assigned mm -hmm. somewhat so that we come yes. to have a discussion totally. about stuff yeah. and we have things that we can. To, you know, deliberately and, and uh, specifically refer to. I think it's a great idea. Um, homework. Mm -hmm. Homework, yeah. And and to just, there, there's nothing you have to fill out or anything, just take some notes and bring it. And if and if the what you bring to the discussion is, that was a horrible webinar and I didn't think it was well run, <laughs> that's okay too. Um, I mean, I think if we're doing, like this, this is new for the board to be doing kind of a training a month on something specific. So I wonder if, you know, it's worth going through what you have proposed here for the year and then saying, okay, is there an area in here where we as a board feel like we need really more dedicated um, 
dedicated um, training on, but I mean, I would hesitate to say we're going to do this monthly and then we're going to find times to do the three trainings that were suggested. I mean, that's just a, I agree. really it's a lot much. of additional time. Mm -hmm. um, Let's and just get I think we can, with this. Yeah, I think we can gain a lot of good information from, from these free ones that are available to us. Right. And then if we find, yeah, like and then we say, decide maybe for the summer that, meeting, we say, okay, we're going to do one training this year on this specific topic, and that's going to be dedicated to our summer board retreat, and, and we it, have that time set right. aside. And, and it may or may not be through the VSBA. Yeah, I mean, there are independent ones too. And we don't need to decide until November on the on the value of the budget here, right? Just in December, I would say. December. So we may it's on our annual. We may for, think yeah. of something at Wake Morley that we all say maybe we should dig in on that um mm -hmm. i mean none of our trainings have been more than i think what was it five thousand was like the most in the past yeah and i think that was, that was winston that I was once i think yeah. it was either five or seven because so, that was a, that was long, a months work. long process yeah. yeah so even that you know even if we want to do something i think mm -hmm. 10 will still be yeah. enough well within our budget we also put in um during covid just so folks are aware of operations reserve fund um, and that handles anything operationally so again if something came up out of the blue like there was some crisis and you know we need some major training on this or we want a speaker to come in we could always um, with board approval tap into that mm -hmm. so I did did set that aside a few years That's back yeah, yeah. That'd be a yeah. Conflict of interest yeah. On the board if it was for the board and we've had to approve it um, because it's operations and that would be performing kind of an operational function, right? Getting us to be able to do what we need to to make sure the district is running effectively and efficiently, that would be operations. So I think we'd fall under that. But I can double check with people. But because we have, I'm just asking because we have to, we're the ones who approve the funds mm -hmm. and how those funds are spent. If we're spending it on something for us as a board, that's okay. It's not considered a conflict. Yeah, you are, by statute, you're the ones that decide. Mm. I have big ideas now. About I was going to say, gonna... is it on a cruise or something? <laughs> 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 like, I mean, that, that to me is for is the little bit. Is Beyonce coming um, in to do it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just think it's that could be. We would have to look into that. I think because it just makes me a little bit nervous it's to odd. say it's like, odd. yeah, like, oh, we want to do this training and it's ten thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars, and we have to approve it from operationals, but we're we're the ones who approve it. It just makes me feel a little. Yeah. I'm not well, and then it's Elaine's about speaking up. So. Right, Elaine's so. responsibility is to then say, "Hey, yo, you yeah, are not, not appropriate." You're mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Checks and balances. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so wow. So since we're already looking at this, the next is is um, subcommittee reports. I know it's last, but since we're all already looking at the annual agenda, can we start with that one? Mm -hmm. um, because the biggest things that Sarah and I added were those um, webinar trainings under board education, the principals um, mm -hmm. attending, and we did try to, you know, next month we're at RUHS, so we thought we'd make it convenient. Mm -hmm. um, Brookfield, then Braintree. We skip February, which is when the legislators come, so mm -hmm. it, it's all, it can be a lengthy meeting. Uh, and then we'll be back here at RES um, for RTCC. And then with the quarterly facilities monitoring reports, um, we added that it would include a report from the facilities staff. I think that was really useful. Um, I think it encourages transparency just with if we have questions, if they um, want to be sure we know what they're doing, anything like that. Um, yeah, those were those were the biggest things. And again, I, I tried to, you know, you'll see, for instance, in June that the, the webinar I'd like us to talk about is how to make the most out of a summer board retreat. You know, I um, try to tie it in with something that we're we're doing that month. Mm -hmm. um i also just want to mention that this is the the base of this the that we kind of added things to and plugged things into and created so i want to give credit where credit is due that ann um, provided me with the the last one that she had really flushed out and then we just put some icing on there 
there's just it's a silly thing yeah but I think we should move the quarterly report just up to monitoring because really that is monitoring assets so mm. it shouldn't be in the consent agenda section the facilities monitoring report yeah should it really be up should in, be in monitoring because we're it's a it's a quarterly monitoring of our assets policy okay. we're checking in on how we're doing taking care of our assets so because the consent agenda is just those little things that we have to approve as a board right but he pretty much does it all whereas the quarterly facilities monitoring report that's really part of how we're monitoring are we taking care of our assets? So right. it really should be up in that monitoring section, not in the on consent its, agenda. Sure. In, in, its in its own, in its own uh, row. Because uh, we have ENDS monitoring and EL oh, monitoring. EL. It would be EL monitoring. Right. Because there's asset protection. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I will make that change. Um, my only question was with the schools, the attendant reports. Mm -hmm. I think it was great hearing um, from Melinda tonight regarding RES, but I'm wondering if this would make sense to shift them to a little bit later in the year because you know the year has really only just started mm -hmm. um, I mean I guess like if we're listening to kind of what the plan is if we're wanting to know what the plan is for the year or like a look back or a little bit more of like a look back of like this is what we're you know this is what we're seeing or this is what we're experiencing this is how we're moving forward through the year I, I don't know if that's but that would be my well, only be kind cool of if question some sort of mechanism for a review mm -hmm. like i thought that was an awesome presentation mm -hmm. and it would be awesome to check in right at ways down the road to see is it how's it going is it working mm -hmm. do you have enough resources where right. you feel like and that's the big well, question is yeah. the budget pieces if you, you have what RTCC, you need to get it done you could do all the campuses twice. <laughs> again because right you have rtcc technically you know four times that's four, so true. Yeah. Because we have the, the thirty minutes the meetings. ahead of four times a year. That's true. So if we take that out, then we can go through another cycle mm. starting in March. So March, April, May, and June. Mm -hmm. um, Might not line up with location, but oh, but I'll it would make actually, it. Actually, because you'd it have would. RES going first at RES in March. You'd have Brookfield. You can have them going second in April. Yeah, we can oh, swap okay. those. Are you yeah. going the yep, third and then Braintree going last? The yep. RTCC meetings, just um, to add a little history to it, they were put next to the regular OSSD board meetings because they weren't getting enough folks to show up for their advisory boards. Mm -hmm. And so the folks um, from the the regular board here we're doing double duty they do not have to be there it's just an advisory meeting just like um you know the the elementary schools and the high school are, are handling so they could move that um i mean if the board prefers that they're there that's that's fine too but they could move that to fit you know the best schedules of the folks coming in from the different schools wow. um, they used to always run them um, early on that. when they had enough folks coming in um, it was usually like three thirty four in the afternoon over at uh the, the fishbowl in, in the civic center. I think well, the last maybe... one I was at was from five, and then I think we got out of executive session about nine forty-five. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because it makes a long day it's for like you if it's long. if it's one after the other. Yeah. Well, why don't you, if Sam, you don't mind, bring that to the next? I can ask Ashley um, in that team yeah. Yeah, meeting and see if there's a, a time that works better for that. So I'm not Ooh. suggesting you have to change it, but just it, it doesn't have to. Yeah. Because it is nice to attend. I, I mean, I've gone a couple of times just because I feel disconnected um, just as an observer, and I encourage anybody else to do that. It does make a long night. I agree. And but I, I agree. It's it. nice to have um, some contact with yeah. RTCC where we normally wouldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can come in and do presentations too. Yeah, you could have yep. them actually come in. I mean, you've already had one. You could have them come in February. Yep. And, and do it. And mm -hmm. It'd just be a shorter one. And okay. then you have them presenting once a year and everyone else presenting twice during twice. the school year. Yeah. So I, I do think we should, because Melinda just sort of said, well, I put this together. I'm guessing this is maybe what you want to hear, but it might be helpful for us to give them some direction in terms of what we want to hear from them. Mm -hmm. 
um, especially if we're going to have them do it twice, mm -hmm. um, just so they can kind of prepare. Yeah, I mean, I actually wish I had asked her while she was here, but I can email her. Maybe she can share with all of us that those the slide presentation. Mm -hmm. I liked the the format she used. I really I thought it kind of laid out. This is what our groundwork is and this is what our goals are and then the second time through the cycle there'd be very specific things for us to check in on. Mm -hmm. And it's it's valuable too because a lot of what they're, Melinda especially is talking about was the planning and the goal setting that we did at the strategic planning session mm -hmm. um, this summer and then kind of their own personal goals so it actually helps making sure that you know, outside of us checking in and, and keeping folks on track that you know if they're having those bigger reports it's a good thing. And they do, a, they do a wonderful job. How, do. how has it been communicated thus far to the principals as to what they're, when they're coming and what they're doing? I um, said, you know, tentatively right now that um, it'd be based upon where the school board meeting is being held. Mm -hmm. So when it's held at RUHS, then RUHS would be sent. And, and when you ask them, can you come and give a presentation, what have you told them thus far? Um, this particular one, I just kind of said, you know, um, things that you think are important for the board to hear about the work that you're doing. You know, it could be as simple as, you know, how, how did the school year open, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I agree with Ian, maybe a little bit of a rubric to say, yeah, this is what we're looking you know, for. Yeah. what's going well, what's not, like what, what are your biggest concerns about the year going into it, what are your biggest excitements? What's your path forward, and then a, and then on the mm -hmm. second one, how's it going? What kind of is a surprise? Is a challenge? Right yeah. Here, yeah, this is a this is a good opportunity. Um, we had, had touched on this earlier that without their input um, and kind of the way that the policy governance was structured for a while, the community wasn't getting a really good feel for what actually is happening in the schools. And so this can also be a showcase of, okay, this is the work that we're engaged in and what we're attempting to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is what the results have been so far. And yeah, it's working out really well. Or, you know, we've been plugging away at this for two years, you know, with full fidelity, and it's not quite what we think it should be, so we're going to try this instead. Sure. But I, I think that's a really good conversation for the community here so that they know that, you know, there's real significant work that's been happening. Well, and it's important to me, though, that they know that, you know, a presentation is great and we can give them kind of parameters of what we're looking for, but I also think this back and forth mm -hmm. discussion, mm -hmm. question yeah. and answer thing is really Three important. Yeah. And I appreciate, Sam, that you clearly came with things that you wanted to ask or wanted to open a discussion about, and I think that's mm -hmm. our responsibility. We're not mm -hmm. inviting them just so we can be an audience. Um, or they can kind of prove something to us or something mm -hmm. like that, but that we want to hear what's going on for them and we are asking for clarification or, you know, a real, a real back and forth, a real give and take mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. It's good stuff. Um, I, I think I've gotten all of the suggestions on the annual agenda, so I will um, make these changes and then send out with, I'll get it to you in time, to uh, send out with the material for next month and we can vote it in, hopefully, or have more discussion about it or anything like that. Uh, okay, we're going all around. Oh, Rachel's not here to report out on the ENDS committee. Oh, brother. Oof. Um, oh, she was our minute taker and our, our speaker. Do you feel prepared at all to talk about our lab? This is ENDS committee report out. I I've mean, moved on to. we... Uh, I wasn't here the week, uh, the month before, so I don't exactly right. know what she said. We were really focused this last time on um, the mission statement. Yes. And mm -hmm. and it, it, fall and Heather, maybe you can also. N none of us are really prepared to report out about it, but um, we actually had something we were going to propose f to bat around, didn't we? As a mission statement, Rachel was going to bring so, something for yes, us to brainstorm uh, so on. Uh, the committee um, looked at many other districts' um, mission statements, sort of as like a preamble to the ends, and um, sort of started to put together samples that we might have put in front of you. I'm sorry that we don't have them. Um, and then also, uh, we used a tool to, a computerized tool to 
put them together and it was quite clever and so we thought we would put that in front of you for a review. Um, we'll have to bench it until next time. Yeah. Also, some work was done on pulling out foundational um, academics, uh, specifically pulling out life skills to elaborate on what is meant by that. Mm -hmm. And that's about as far as the committee has gotten. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about also keeping in mind how it might be measured. Yes. You know, yes. if we want to pull yeah. something out and specifically list it as an end, yeah. What, how would we be looking for it to be measured? Mm -hmm. Remember, we don't have to necessarily figure that out. That can How to back. measure it, no, but if it can be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't want to give someone a goal that is, doesn't have a way yeah. to, yeah, to measure. We're being very measure. strategic. Like one row at a time, what, mm -hmm. what would fit here, why we think it should go here versus here. A lot of just puzzle pieces. It's going well, though. It's a, it's a process. <laughs> Megan brings snacks <laughs> for my child, <laughs> not for the rest of us. Oh, gosh. Um, so, so these we all need to start warning, right, moving forward. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so we'll table for a more kind of... We're definitely not done yet. Beefy. So I think we, no, we, no, so no. we have, we've got a lot, of more, a lot more work to do, um, but we're like getting somewhere. We feel like we're getting somewhere. We met twice in the last month and we'll plan on doing that again. Yes. So I have a question just because we're working on a budget. Are these ends going to be changed so much that when when he's put, putting together a budget, it's gonna be like, oh man, we gotta revamp everything? Or is it, is it, my guess, it's sort of a rhetorical question. My guess is it's pretty, it's not gonna change things dramatically in terms of where we're going in terms of budgetary needs. I agree with that statement. It, okay. um, some of it we've already launched, like um, expanding our life skills programming. Mm -hmm. And so, I think what it may have the impact of doing is forward-facing, making us look more intentional about the things we're doing, like these SEL and PBIS, and things that are maybe are not currently reflected in the end statement, and also um, tighten down how they may be interpreted. They're very open right now to the superintendent's interpretation, and the board may want to have a a more narrow scope on the data that would be appropriate for each end. Just make sure it's data we can collect and it doesn't mm -hmm. take a Absolutely. year to... Absolutely. Like that's what we need about That's what we need. <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> but like about. this DESA data would be perfect. It would plug right into... Exactly. Right, right, right. right. Exactly. Yeah. There's, either, there's good ways to do stuff, so that's good. Yeah. That just Excellent question, Anne. Very off topic, but that just reminded me of something. When we have presentations, can we please ask that acronyms be spelled out? <laughs> yeah, just I was like, thinking uh -huh. that when it was happening. Like which one, DESA? No, yeah, well, do any of them. SEL. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a different language that many of us it so are is. not. It's we'll so is. We'll have them come with a glossary. And I'm not joking it. about this. We'll actually have them come with a glossary. A glossary. That but we also have to make sure yep. they say it the full way for folks that are watching. Right. 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 So they say, yeah. Positive behavior, social emotional oh. yeah. That's PBIS. And the social emotional. So, learning, social yeah. emotional learning is SEL. Halfway. I don't know what DESA stands for. It's brand new. I have to Google it. But that is an excellent suggestion. As, as someone who lives in a world of acronyms, it's right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially in Vermont, it's, it's bad. Very um, <laughs> in in, in the education sector, it's huge. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not uncommon for me to, in the middle of a meeting, be Googling, mm -hmm. what is that? <laughs> same, same with the healthcare sector. Right? Yeah. We like acronyms over there. Yes. Um, Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee. I know you just had a meeting. Yep. Um, so, we just had a meeting. We have, the committee has the compiled data from um, all of the survey information. 100% of the board did the survey, so that's awesome. Yay, board. <laughs> um, we're just going through it right now with Sandra Cameron from VSBA and sort of highlighting goals for this next year. Um, 
and we didn't get through all of it today, so we're going to meet again on Friday and finish and clearly write out those goals. Is that? And go over the goals, yeah. And then hopefully um, at least begin to pinpoint where in policies we might need to add some language language or some yeah more specific um so thoughts. i will tonight send you all the survey results she wants a privacy clause put into the email that i send out and she was going to send me the words for that so mm -hmm. as soon as i get that it's I'll send personnel it information so it has to be yeah. confidential confidential mm -hmm. but yeah everyone will see that Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's good. So I think the hope is to have it um, going forward for the next year to review at the end of next year, this time next year, to say, how did it go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you agree? Do you have any input? Do you have anything no, you want to add? I, no, I thought it was a, a good process. Um, you know, especially being able to get some clarity on real specific goals will be really, really helpful. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Good. Uh, facilities subcommittee, I'm turning towards the sole so, member, so which so I do we, think we need to do something about. Yeah, so we have to do something about it, is my understanding about um, just rules. Uh, we have to add at least another person to the subcommittee. Um, so they did have a meeting lined up with facilities, stopped, put the pot, put the brakes on that meeting because we need to warn it and, and I need another member. So that's in order to have a quorum, just so everyone understands why there should be more than one person on a, yeah. on a subcommittee. Um, so the, and the meeting that we were scheduling was going to be an update on where Bob and Wes are with working with the engineers because we had given we had earmarked some money for them to start the process with uh, examining uh, viability of new school and what that might look like and so that was the next meeting is merely a check in we are basically starting from the ground floor, so it's not like anybody's behind. So is that the charge of this? I don't remember when we established this committee, but is that the charge of this committee? Is to look at mm -hmm. possible new building? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if there's anyone who is interested in volunteering for being on that committee. Yes. I, I have an idea in mind of someone that I'd like to invite and request to be on that committee, but does anyone want to throw themselves in? Well, we definitely need, just because of at least something that you said at the end of the last meeting, we should definitely have somebody from Brookfield and somebody from Braintree Mm -hmm. um, just because when we even were trying to unify the district, there was a lot of concern from the smaller communities that we were going to shut down their schools. Mm -hmm. um, so I think to make sure that, that those communities are well represented, I think we should have somebody we have, from Marine Tree, somebody from have Brookfield. Brookfield have a Brookfield representative. Yeah. And then, and, and, and as far as East Hill Brookfield too, that's like the furthest corner. <laughs> so yeah, extra. you'll be able to speak it's, to busing. It's the longest bus field. route. I can tell you that for free. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our brain tree representatives. Who's not, who's not here tonight? <clears throat> Is Sarah brain tree? No, Rachel. she's Sarah. Right she's she's right right oh, it's Rachel. She's right, right. on line. Yeah, for sure. Sarah she's Randolph. She's, she's Randolph. Randolph. she's Randolph. It's Rachel and, and Katya. Um, so I think we, if you, yeah. She's just looking down. She's <laughs> so I think we can oh, wait to, to see again. if, yeah, <laughs> if, if Rachel would like to join. Um, I also wondered, Sarah, if you would be interested on being on this subcommittee, um, just 
because of your interest slash knowledge um, about facilities topics. But I know you're not feeling well, so I'm not going to put you on this. Well, I just did, but <laughs> no need to respond right now. Just know that your name occurred to me. Um, but that's great. Thank you for setting up the meeting and then putting a pause until we mm -hmm. get our ducks in a row here. Um, that's it for committees. Uh, except a new committee. We're going to discuss having another committee. <laughs> um, but Rachel had actually pointed this out to me that um, we need to start talking about the superintendent contract, um, which uh, in his contract, um, it's by December, I believe, that, that we're required to state our intent. Um, so uh, I thought it might be a good idea to have a subcommittee to really dig in on contractual. Who did this last time? Do you remember who was part of that? I think Paul Putt. I think so too. Here, and I don't remember who the second body. Oh, because it's a three year. It was a three year. Right. Yeah, three I don't years. remember who the three second year body ago, was. Twenty twenty. So it must have been probably right, Laura. Right before, yeah. Yeah. Laura. Mm. Are they, they, I don't think they made it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think or they made it. Brian, maybe. Um, so if if you want to think about it, I suppose that would be okay. But if anyone's ready to to um, volunteer, so what's the charge of this committee going to be to just make up a contract or make review whatever review. is currently in place to see. I mean, it would be like almost like a teacher's con, right? I mean, is it similar to that? So like you look at it and you see if both sides are in agreement to the, what's currently on the contract, if there's changes that need to be made. Yeah, and it's, it's usually, it should be kind of a negotiation um, piece. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like having the committees that go and meet with uh, the teachers, um, just like you're saying. The VSBA has put out a model contract um, I've never been a stickler about what's in it. Um, ours is actually a pretty weak contract on both sides. Um, so it might be worth kind of, if whoever gets on that committee is just taking a look at what VSBA has produced. Mm -hmm. um, and is legal involved in that too, then, in those discussions? Yeah, it's, it's definitely it worth useful. running it, um, you know, past Pietro, he can be there. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, if there seems to be an agreement, you know, you want to buy him and just say, hey, is this language, you know, leading us to something that we didn't intend? On both sides, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that subcommittee, those meetings would be warned, but would be executive session mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. um, just. Yeah, it's like labor negotiations. Should, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, again, if people want to think about whether they want to be involved, although I think time obviously is of the essence. Um, so, we do. Well, mm -hmm. One way or the other, we're going to need a superintendent. In a contract so we need a group working on that by December 15th we just need to let him know our intentions right um, whether or not of we, renewal. we want to go into negotiations to renew or not mm -hmm. so um, right time is of the essence in terms of that particular decision but not to get the contract written right by right, December right. in any way, so. um, which in itself is an executive session topic um, personnel. So uh, we do not have that on this month, so I will put it on next um, uh, as a personnel issue, and we can talk about it. Yes? But in terms of, so, you're right, Anne. In, in that case, I suppose people do have time to think about whether they want to be on that committee because it's something that would, that would go beyond December. Um, so right. it, go, it goes till the end of June, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that? June, June, June 30th. 30th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please do consider whether, whether that's something you want to be on. Uh, standing committees. So I kind of threw this out there as something I want us to talk about and consider. 
um, uh, many boards, I think um, two, two different board members of at the table at this training that we went to, Chelsea and Lane, were talking about how they have standing committees, a, a budget slash finance committee, mm -hmm. um, a facilities committee, a, I guess we would call it ownership linkage. I mean, I think that we've had subcommittees either in the past or we do now that um, would apply here, but I think they should be standing. You come onto the board and you are either assigned or volunteer um, to be on and regularly meet throughout the year, um, all not board, all just board when. To, yeah. all, yes, and it's a, re a requirement of being on the board that you serve on one of these standing committees. So right now it's just kind of a, a discussion topic proposal. Is this something we're interested in? Um, in my experience on the board, and it's just a few years, we kind of think of something that needs to be, that we need to dive into, okay, let's create a subcommittee, and it's very kind of as needed. And I feel like there's an argument to be made um, that if we already had standing committees in place, it would be more about, okay, this is something we need to dive into, assigning it to a committee that already exists, unless it's something like the contract one, which is only a certain, at certain times. I'm not necessarily advocating for it or not. What do people think? Are we already fried? It's only, it's only 7.9. Um, I mean, I think it makes sense because there are some things that fall under that. I mean, I think even just, you know, some of the operational pieces was like discussing, um, starting the discussion for labor contracts and all that, that stuff that happens and that kind of pops up around there too. But I mean, I do feel like that ownership linkage one would be one that would be a standing committee. I don't, I don't see that going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So, that. And then depending on what you need of what comes up, you can just assign tasks to the, that committee that's already going. That's what you're saying? As long as it's like, like, yeah. like if they had like an operational right committee that just understood that that charge of that committee is to kind of if something is arises to the top as a need that's not being addressed by these other two that would be the focus of that committee. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I guess I don't see the. Seems pretty transparent to just say, all right, we have this need. Let's create a committee. Let's give it a charge. Let's give it a budget rather than, I mean, we have the negotiation committees. Which we do assign at the beginning of right. each cycle. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, those are the only real sort of regular ones. The ownership committee that we've now turned into the newsletter committee. Well, no, we've given it a charge. Uh, so we, what, is, given it a what task. is the charge? The charge is to write the newsletters. But it, I, think ownership, I think ownership linkage like would stay ownership linkage. Mm -hmm. And right okay. now, there will be other things that come up under ownership linkage. It just so happens that this is one of the okay. things that the ownership linkage group should be charged with doing. Okay. Yeah. And so that one would be an engagement. standing. Yeah. yeah, they would do other engagement pieces. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that, yeah, so that's one. Um, Facilities is there, but that's we've because got, we we've have got, a need. We've got a it's need got a for charge. that, so that probably right. doesn't need to be started. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are examples that you heard. Yes, of yeah. Or if people have other examples. I feel, I feel like we can make a committee when we need a committee, mm -hmm. and. So until we change our policies, we also have a policy that says we, we won't just have committees for the sake of having committees mm -hmm. in our committee policy as a board. So um, I do think it would be helpful, though, 
if we're making these like ad hoc committees to be specific about the work the that charge, we've done right, and the time exactly, frame in which that work should be completed. Frame. So yeah. those committees can kind of stand up quickly, be tasked yeah. with something, and bring it back to the board in a certain time frame that's not, you know, not the next this year. ongoing, right. And that's what I like about having it be a committee with a charge, because then you can kind of have this wandering. But I, I do still feel thing. ownership linkage should be an ongoing committee. That's I don't see that changing as that is. I don't a think so either. Strategy I feel like it should be addressed at every single meeting because if it's not, then it it gets lost. And it also, ha I mean, it's been being treated differently. It's not being treated as a, you know, these reports for these subcommittees that are the annual agenda subcommittee right. not going to have to exist. But the the ownership linkage, I mean, that's one of our primary tasks, purposes right. of being. Right. Yeah. So originally that committee was supposed to come up with a plan for the year for linking with the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that then that, that sort of feeds into this annual agenda mm -hmm. so that you kind of know, okay, we're going to do this event to reach out to the community or whatever. Um, so if you create your plan, then you don't need the committee anymore. I or, except that we send the newsletter, a, and then you have the next year when you're going to create your plan again. Yeah, I think it needs to be a live committee. I think it, it, a, a, a plan takes out the active engagement that I think needs to be there to monitor whether that plan is working, to see. I, because I think sometimes the purpose of a committee is to really focus on one thing that's being done and make sure it's being done well. And I think that the ownership linkage committee can have different, right now it's tasked with the newsletters and we'll see how that goes, but it's not the only thing. Ownership linkage is always gonna be a live, moving thing we need to create and recreate. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a big part of our job as a board. Right. So if we're... So we've got to be thinking and planning for doing that. So is it's usually, are we not going to, so are we going to, we've tasked them to, to do that, so then how are we going to come up with, okay, what's our linkage plan? What are we going to do? What do we want to do? Or is that something that is going to take place in the ownership linkage committee? I think that's a great question. Um, I think tasking the committee with writing the newsletter is not it. Even just in terms of the newsletter, I th excuse me while I stare in space, I'm trying to organize <laughs> what I'm thinking here. Um, it's not just about composing the newsletter, it's about um, you know, thinking about the rhythm of the newsletter, it's, it's uh, thinking about the responses that we're getting. I think just saying right now the task is you're just writing one and then that'll be it and then in three months you'll write another one and that'll be it. I think seeing how they do and and thinking about, yeah, bringing other ideas here I'm still, I'm staring into space and still not making much sense. Mm. So I'm going to stop talking. I can't organize my thoughts enough to get them out. <laughs> it sounds like maybe this is either worth continuing to discuss this. I didn't mean for this to be a thing we're voting on tonight. I did, you know, or electing people to yeah. or, or anything like that. It's, it's something to consider and keep in people's brains. And so in just in your training, what they had recommended this. As, they no, as, no, this was a, a, we happened to be at a table with, you know, you're sitting with other members of other school district they boards. This is they happen they to yeah. have, this guy we were talking to is talking about subcommittees, I think. So, 
it's an idea that I thought I'd throw out there. It sounds like we're okay as we are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Business as usual. Oof. It's hot in here. People. We can always so come I, back to it if, if yeah. it's something right. If we want to we can I mean, we don't have yeah. we don't have an end date for ownership link right. Right, as of right now. So right. it's, that is basic. I mean, we don't have an end date for any of these committees yeah. as of right now. True. So until we start applying those, I think we can just keep operating. Great. Um, I just have a comment about the annual agenda and the work that we're doing on the superintendent evaluation because in order for it to be effective, it needs to be done every year, which means the committee needs to be formed every year to look at it, right? Meet with the SBA, meet with the superintendent, come up with all of that. It needs to happen this time of year as board members come and go. I mean, should it be written into the annual agenda to form a committee in August for Why does this? it have to be with the VSBA each time? I think it's a good, neutral way to run it. Because they facilitate the surveys and they collect the data. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Something like an independent, yeah. It's a neutral. great, yeah. yeah like okay, yeah. that's what I think. So I don't know if we want to write that into the annual agenda or if we want to just yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, that makes and sense. And then, I mean, I would think the feedback from that would go probably not with, I don't know, how pay like happens with the superintendent. But an evaluation, typically, if you are going for an evaluation, you're also either getting a pay raise or something like that, I, I think, in at least in my business, but maybe not in the bigger corporate world. Maybe evaluations are just evaluations and cost of living raises are just given. <laughs> I don't know how that works, though, with the budget. Right, the, and, the and superintendents you, is budgeted like that that's in the budget right and yeah. it's in your contract it's, when you it's, start it's right? negotiated yeah and so it's whatever you know comes out of the negotiation session i'm um, just kind of like the teachers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of it's a pretty similar process so. maybe you could talk to in your subcommittee you could ask if that's even a or if it's just a thing. yeah well my other question then is the evaluation, does that make sense then to have it tied almost to the start and end of the school year too? Because if we're asking if if the idea is to set goals for the superintendent for the following year, wouldn't that tie in better with the goals should be coming in at the start of a school year rather than midway through a school year? Mm -hmm. Right, that's why we're, we're, we're madly trying to do it right now. Yeah. And in, in most cases, because if there's like a significant budget impact in mm -hmm. terms of what's being asked, that you know, we're going to have to, you know, that might be a two year, right? Because if I hear about it now and I'm planning on it for the budget, I don't get that money in the budget until the following school year. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if we should back, if, I mean, I know now it would be difficult then to say, okay, now we're going to go into another one in six months rather than a year, but I'm wondering if we back it. If we try to back it up and say we start this process in, in April to have it concluded by July or something like that. Yeah. No, that does make sense. Because I feel like when, when we started, it was in July, was when our, my first year here. Because we got that questionnaire in March when we first joined. And I was like, oh, right. I just started. I feel like I can't respond to this. Right. Yeah. And that came out, I believe, in June or July. But if you have to make the decision in December, you might want the process to follow that timeline. Just, just a thought. But couldn't, oh, I guess I was going to say, couldn't that be adjusted too, moving it forward? Could be. Right. Yeah, I guess what it make, what, what, where does it make most sense? Does it make most sense to then, like I said, have, have goals and whatnot come out at a not congruent to the school year, so the superintendent isn't able to init initiate those changes for a full school year, right? because it's going to carry them over two school years. 
And usually like the December 15th date, that's actually a late one. Most superintendents have it probably end of, end of October, early November, um, because there's certain windows when, mm -hmm. and there, it's not like the positions are open all year because people are in contracts, so mm -hmm. you want to be prepared. Right. They're already uh, posted. Yeah. yeah. So. so not all of you them. You aren't looking, are you? Yeah, I, I was do. about to say. <laughs> hey, oh, oh no, here. I keep my eye on what's out there. Not for myself, just for myself, but all of the districts around us. Like, what's going on? Yeah, it's I nice mean, to get Every couple of weeks, I, I take a look at what's going on. Who still needs a principal at this time of year? It's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's important to know, too, what's going on. Um, but in New Hampshire, there's a couple of superintendents posted right now. But I haven't seen the Vermont ones posted yet. But, um, a lot, well, I got I got the Massachusetts for whatever keeps trying yeah. to haul me haul me back. Yeah, and there are di direct recruiters who will reach out directly to people. Yeah. So, um, thank you for that. It was funny though. It was very kind. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah I mean, the, just worth considering how we want to frame that as far as the time frame that we're looking at this and where it falls, and being mindful of the fact that I think it should start at the beginning of the year in September start of school right you want to give me a, you want to give me enough time especially because a lot of these goals aren't like one week and they're done right, right. you got you got to give time to yeah. actually be able to do the work and yeah. so and, when, and try to see the when would work July August. whatever the longest stretch is you know if I knew if I knew what the goals were in July mm -hmm. you know that way I can go into the strategic planning with uh, the cabinet on it and we can work out what our plans are and how we're going to get the stuff achieved mm -hmm. um, and then have the whole year to to try to get it done. Right. And the, this is set up for policy governance. So policy governance, it's, you're evaluated based on the ends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, and that's part of what we're doing with, with the evaluation process is um, looking at, you know, do we need to change some ELs and, and we are gonna need to change our our policy that talks about how we evaluate the, mm -hmm. the superintendent so that it matches in with what we're doing because mm -hmm. otherwise we're not in compliance and he could not say policy. doesn't matter you guys aren't in compliance I'm not gonna do you know I'm doing what it, what it says in your policy so we've got to we've got to have it all it all has to go together yeah it has mm -hmm. to match mm -hmm. um, and I would say, I still want compliance with the M's and with the ELs. That's a pretty big part of the evaluation that I would like to make sure we maintain, and then we maybe add a few. Only concerns, things. only concern that I would have is that if with the ends piece, we keep, we keep it going, we keep the ELs going because it's good to review those processes and making sure we're in compliance. But if some massive goal came out of the evaluation process that is at odds with the ends, that may not just physically be doable, right? So, you know, if, uh, I'm assuming well, most of the goals are going to be in alignment with what we're looking for yeah, in the ends anyway, I, I so I don't think it's going to be a problem, but just, just to throw that caution out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, April? April's well, you May? know what it might be? Yeah. It Maybe it was well, that the BSBA was busy. You know, if they get other districts wanting them to do, although they put a survey together and they email it out. It's I mean, fast, it's not I think, like and I think it it'll was, be fast the second time, faster the second yeah. time. I just think. Or if you sign up for it now, you know. Yeah. yeah. If you make I'd your decision say, with data, it's just sign up yes. for it now. I almost think June, you know, right at the end, Toward the end, although would we not I would, get as much? No, I would. Yeah, I would start it earlier. Maybe May. May. Yeah, May. I would form the committee at the April meeting, and then yeah, May would be May. when the committee would start. So meeting, because we want to get that survey yeah. out by May, early June, before people have. It's pretty busy at the end of the yeah. school year. Because you're asking, you're getting by feedback May. from administration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and here, did you put that on for May? Mm-hmm. Thank you. April, I mean. Right, to form yeah. the committee in, in okay. April. Yeah. Great. Okay. 
uh, we're moving on to advocacy, which is when I'm going to remind everyone that the annual VSBA VSA Fall Conference is at the Lake Morian, October 26th and 27th. I'll be there just the 26th. Um, you'll be there both. Uh, well, I have it on my calendar for both. The 26th okay. is especially important because they're doing highlighting the equity work that mm -hmm. we did with the portrait of a graduate. Right? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but currently, I have it on my calendar for both days. Yes. Both. Okay. Yes. I'm I'm going to be there. Yeah, and Anne awesome. and I were both days last year, and it was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what time? I I have a morning conflict on the 26th, but I plan to be there for the rest of Thursday and then Friday. It's usually like 9 to 3.30, and then the yeah, specialty meetings where when you guys are doing your vote proxies, those usually happen the first day at around 4.30. Those, yeah. those groups go off. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> they send them to me. But oh, cool. Okay. They, they go to the chair. Thank so you. I, so. Um, so, great. That sounds like we'll have several people there. Awesome. Yeah. 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 All right, and we'll good. report back. Uh, consent agenda. So let's start with if anyone has um, changes to the minutes. Oh, I'm being such a stickler for this one. I'm so sorry. I love that you, I did. hey. Well, no, I know you, you did. <laughs> uh, no, where, where is it again? Here. I just saw that on, um, and I think I requested this change last time. There's still... Um, Approved minutes from special board meeting on 8:23, 2 p.m. and close with agenda. We didn't. We did not have a special board meeting at, on that day at that time. We only had the 6 p.m. So one. It was a committee meeting at 2 p.m. So we need to strike that. So that's um, um, 6B under consent agenda on the previous minutes. That's not on you. <laughs> strike or change to. Just we, the yes, one we, we had will. is covered in C, so B can just be st stricken, struck. Okay. Stricken. Okay. Anything else? I think that's all I said. Yeah? Okay. Um, facility reserve funds request. Can I speak to that one? Please do. Okay, wonderful. Um, the... Outdoor classroom at Braintree Elementary School, um, currently there's no pathway by which um, it can be accessed by um, people with any type of physical disabilities. Um, and there's a steep trail that goes up from the uh, elementary school to the outdoor classroom. Mm. And so this third paragraph on this letter written uh, really captures it well. The third paragraph talks about the need for an ADA compliant trail. So they were very proactive and they reached out and they got a pitch from a local community member and on the subsequent pages, um, the pitch from Zach Freeman to install a ADA compliant walking trail is outlined. Um, and so we did investigate the opportunity to purchase this with grant funds, but found that um, the restrictions on construction with grant funds are so tight mm -hmm. that we recommend that uh, we move forward with using uh, reserve funds. So the request is for $19,450 to be approved for reserve funds to build an ADA compliant from the Braintree Outdoor Classroom to the elementary school. And we don't need to get more than one bid because it's not over 40000 That's you right. Got it. That's yeah. it. I do. What's that? <laughs> And he would be doing the work? Yes. And you can see there's a multi-page proposal. Mm -hmm. The Braintree Elementary School Universally Accessible Trail Design and Construction Proposal. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he has, um, you know, he maps it. And then he itemizes the expenses mm -hmm. with an estimated cost at the end of the 19450 we have 1.9 million left in the facilities yes. reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess my only question is, what are the ADA like? What what 
If a student um, had a physical disability that required that they used any assistive device, well, no, I mean like for mobility. In in this proposal, what is stating the um, like ADA requirements? Like how it's meeting ADA requirements would be my only. Um, well, at this time, if we held an event at the outdoor classroom, we would basically have to tell adults and students who couldn't make the trek up the steep hill that they couldn't participate, mm -hmm. which would not be compliant with ADA regulations. That, that, that part I definitely understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess the, I'm not saying this right. Okay. How is... Like, is it going to be three feet wide? In the to, scope of this project, yeah. yeah. How is he defining that he is meeting ADA requirements for the path to be considered ADA? So they usually, um, and this, this might be helpful, the ADA usually is pretty explicit about, you know, what the angle of incline can be and things like that. And, you know, that's something that Bob and Wes could actually work with folks to look up. I know, I know that he just did one last year in Bethel, an ADA um, walking trail. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that he knows the specs, but... Um, yeah, he's using the language he, universally... Just, ex I'm sorry. We could just ask him, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's using the phrase universally accessible trail throughout his proposal. And then he starts using the acronym, right? Mm -hmm. UA, right? So um, he's proposing 800 and line uh, 850 linear feet um, with an existing footbridge um, built with best practices throughout. Okay. Sam, were you proposing that we ask him to come and speak? Well, no, I was just saying if we if we wanted him to I mean, yeah, email I mean, that it's, in. That it's the sentence here, I guess, would, would be the... Maybe just double check with him. Okay. To make sure it's going to be whatever the standard is, whatever the compliant requirements are. Yeah, I mean, that would be my only thing, because if we say we've built an ADA trail, and, then it's and it doesn't actually meet ADA requirements... Right. That's just my only, like, just the caveat. I guess it does, this sentence here, though, I guess it could be, the trail design will maintain the appropriate grade and profiles in accordance to UA guidelines. But I think it would just be helpful to have that confirmation. What yeah. the UA guidelines are. Exactly. Right, how many feet wide, mm -hmm. what's the greatest What's the grade, pitch? what's the yeah. slope, what's the, yeah. Okay. Yes. I know we're not required to go out for more bids. I just, I don't have enough knowledge in this area to know if th this is where I find approving these things tricky on a personal level I I don't know if 11 9 is um, appropriate it, it, it's it's hard I feel almost irresponsible voting to approve something when I have no if, if there's someone here that can help me you know uh, but I would be just blindly approving a number, you know, and mm. not that I don't have trust here, but um, it feels irresponsible to not ask. Yeah. Someone can tell me uh, so, or compare it to something. So I'm close friends with Zach, so I'll recuse myself from the boat, but I do know that the spec for building dirt, single track, trail, for biking is about 25 per foot. Okay. Or whatever, I, uh, 25 uh, I, IF or LF, whatever, linear foot. Are you on the first line? Yeah. And that's what he's charging? No, he's, he's charging, charging 14. 14. Oh. Mm-hmm, yeah, I see, thank you, yep. Okay. And and but I do I do labor. know that that the cost of these things are just mm -hmm. high they in general. Right. And right. I mean, the the materials I'm less concerned about. That's very helpful to have that um, number to compare labor and how long it will take for anyone who's done this kind of thing. So he says two weeks yep. build, start to finish. Um, right. He's billing at sixty per hour, which is reasonable. Mm -hmm. And so total 
for like design, you know, he's only like twenty five hours. I mean, yeah, that's less than two weeks, pretty much, if you're working yeah. eight hours a day on a on a site. We hire excavators and dirt movers a lot, and it, it seems like a very reasonable mm -hmm. quote to me. Sarah would probably know the best because mm -hmm. her husband does this exact work, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. She's not on anymore. Right. Well, right. and there's an opportunity, it says for, you know, handwork, volunteer handwork is provided, so there's an opportunity for people to support the project, too. If that, I don't know if they're, if, you know, the school would put a call out to... He does seem to invite that several times yeah. in the proposal. Yeah. And I do see now that it says that it will maintain a 60-inch width, which is five feet, to accommodate throughout the trail. So mm -hmm. that is under trail design and construction. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it seems totally legit. Yeah. No, it definitely does. Yeah. I just so. bought a roll of fabric. That's the right price for that. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I agree that that... That classroom is hard to get to, even as a parent who would go up there, um, and it is on a pretty steep, steep walk up. So I think making it more accessible to all people who can enjoy that space, and especially coming in and seeing what a great um, space that is for the students, I think making it accessible to children, younger children, people with disabilities, older adults, all that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would be very beneficial. Do the other schools have uh, outdoor classroom spaces? I, I made sure that we put them in with the first year of ESRA funds so yeah. they all have them. This one's up, up, up on a pretty steep sledding hill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think it's kind of soggy too in yeah. the, in the springtime, so it, it, the trail would be quite... Where is the one here? Out in the playground somewhere? That way? <laughs> and it is, it is easy to get to. They can, a lot of them can go right out the door right by it. And the one in Brookfield is just down around the corner here. Brookfield is uh, over towards where they put in the, they tried to put in the second well. Mm -hmm. So you go across the athletic fields, you go yeah. through the pine trees, and then it's, it's right yeah. there. Yeah, part so of it. So is that, is that one easily accessible mm -hmm. by wheelchair? Yeah, there's actually a road. Because, okay. they, yeah, they built a road to get mm -hmm. down to the well, um, so you can get there that way. Plus, they also did some improvements when they were putting in the paving. They recognized that if they added some paving in some areas where it didn't exist, it was going to help out with a lot of the mobility issues, especially in the wintertime when things are snowy. Mm -hmm. um, so they did expand the footprint of the pavement up there when they did the paving job this last time. <clears throat> so this is just part of the consent agenda. So um, mm -hmm. we're not, okay. unless someone wants to separately vote on that, I'd like to include it yeah. as the, yeah. as the, full vote. So then the um, transportation reserve funds request for the bus. The bus. So the bus, um, they have a bunch of these old 2012 blue Ford F-150 vans that haul about nine kids. Um, they are getting well to the end of their useful life. The one in particular that he's talking about before is pretty much rotted out of um, it will not pass inspection when inspection is due in January. We had the, the shop mechanic up at the, the town garage take a look at it. They do the work on our, our equipment. Um, and so he went out to take a look. Um, the prices are astronomical right now. Um, and the vehicles are hard to find because of the strike. Um, so what he's looking at is a used uh, Ford uh, F-150 van. Um, for 44,000, it's got 17,000 miles on it. It's the only thing that's available out there right now. Um, the price actually is not bad because that also includes the retrofit, right? They've got to put the bus lights on there and then the signs that go out, so all that equipment on there. Um, the only thing it won't come with is our camera systems, which we'll, we'll put in after we get it here. Oh, and it's from California, so rust is sort of, yeah. Yeah, and, and literally um, they can't get the new ones. Um, they'll, they're happy to take our money for a brand new one for the 96000 which is ridiculous, um, but they can't guarantee if and when they'll have one. Um, mm -hmm. Even during COVID, we had delays with replacing some of the pickup trucks that the facilities department used. We ordered them, and it was a year and a half wait to actually get the vehicle. Where is it? It's in, it's in California? No, it's in Maine. Maine. It's in Maine. Oh, now, yeah, but it's from California. 
it's a reasonable price. We should mm -hmm. just do it. Anything? Especially with that mileage. Yeah. We've got 890000 in the transportation reserve line. Okay. Well, depending um, on what Bluebird strikes for a deal. <laughs> That's <laughs> an interesting couple of years here. <laughs> Uh, and the approval of change of signers for Community Bank. Is that you? That's already done. Great, so I guess we better consent. <laughs> 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 oh, but that wasn't in last month's? And all those names are on that sheet that we had to approve last month? There were some Do you, because of the new principles. Yeah, some yeah, because of had, the new principles. I think we did two last month. For and signers. you had Sue and you had, because right, you had and to change And I asked the question what, because Linda was still on there, yeah. And she's still um, technically on there because she's your treasurer. Yeah. Yep. From the. Pass. Yeah. I I just just it. to take a point. Take a sink. So you would be the two coming on? Oh no, it's Rachel and Linda. Are the ones on here? Right. Okay. So it is, but it is different from that from the ones. Okay, that was yep. my question. I just thought we'd done it already. Um, so I will now entertain a motion to approve with the edit on the minutes, please. So moved. Second. Thank you, Katya. <clears throat> Seconded by Megan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No one's on there. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Great. If I'm you name. Uh, no. Nope. Abstain. Yep. Well, yes. Uh, so d those opposed, no. Abstentions? Sam. Sam. The motion passes. Uh, closing, superintendent's report, do you want to talk about it at all? Um, or questions? Most of it was just updating the board on the Act 29. Um, mm -hmm. So they had the swatting incident last year, um, which was where they kind of overloaded the switchboards um, with uh, hoax calls in that there were multiple shootings going off across the state. Yeah. Randolph um, High School being one of the, the locations. Mm -hmm. Um, the state responded by passing um, Act 29 in the legislature. Um, most of the provisions that that law requires, we have already done. They were in place um, a year before the law actually went into place. The biggest uh, piece of work on my plate um, is the all emergency plan has to be redone by July 1st. Um, we do have one. It's old. It does need to be updated, especially needs to be updated using the new format and process that the state has um, has recommended. And so I'll, I'll be getting to work on that in November. I've been to three, four trainings at this point in time on it. Um, so that should be good and ready to go. Um, that is not something the, the board would have to vote on at the okay. end, but I'll be able to report out that yes, it is complete and we made it by the deadline. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, did anyone have, I mean, they're not here to answer, but questions about, about the reports, the newsletters that we were sent separately from mm -hmm. principals and nope, directors? Nice, nice to get it is nice to get those. Thank you. Um, the financial report. Oh. Do you, are there things you want to specifically? Uh, there were some things I scribbled down, but I don't think there were anything that's, or stuff I questions I had for, for Robin, which I talked with her about today, which are good. But I think the biggest thing is like the, the rule of thumb here is that you know we're spending, we should be spending about 8.3% 8 8 of the overall budget every month. Um, we are a quarter of the way into the fiscal year. Our fiscal year starts in on July 1st. Um, so we should have spent about 75% of it. We spent 86% of it. So we're, we're well in the black um, at this point in time. Um, let me see if there's anything that was... I, I have a request. Can we can we move this report to um, the monitoring section of our of our agenda? And when you say eighty six percent, like where where are you talking? <laughs> so so I'm if just you take a look, if you take a look at the numbers, and I'm like, yeah. Ah. If you take a look at the overall budget for 2023-24, right, 23,534,968, that's on the front page. You see that we've spent 3,460,000 of it so far. Mm -hmm. So if if I did my math right, we've got 3,460. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So that's so how that's how much total, has been spent so far. Here's the amount 
And then the last column is how much of the overall budget we've got left, the 20 million. The 20, okay. Okay. The quir quirky ones, some I can point out just to familiarize people a little bit. Um, page three under expenditures. Um, under instruction, so if you go down, there's a, a tuition line. Uh, if you go over, uh, it says that it's it's overspent by 17 percent. Um, that's due to some of the students that moved in that were high need that needed to go to outplacements. Um, so you know, we talked uh, a couple of years back about we had built a, a special education fund. Um, because we often have students that move in and it can be quite expensive and they're hard to predict uh, within the budget process, so that's what we suffer for it. So, um, wait a minute, that was the 385? Am I in the wrong thing again? I'm in I the apologize. wrong thing. Okay. Actually, you know, it'd be easier if I actually projected these. I should have thought about that because there's so many lines. But, okay. I, but we do go through and we kind of scan and see what's uh, over and under. Um, but if you check. The, the overall piece, so it says instruction at the top, and it's got all these roll-up lines, we call them, they all roll up into instruction. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you the total amount that's left for that instruction part of the budget as 84.37 percent. So, so we're still we're still pretty yeah we're, we're we're still still pretty good. And the only reason why I was thinking I would I would like to see it up in the in the monitoring section is when you do your financial conditions monitoring report refer you to this. refer to this and where it is in the agenda it's sort of like just kind of these general reports but this is really showing the community it's for us to sort of say okay are we on track why, why is this one negative you know those right are right and and just getting more just so that clear on how to read it and what it means and other one that's probably important for the board to know especially because we have been asking for reserve funds mm -hmm. um, if you look at the very first page right orange southwest school district summary um, and you go down to about here and it starts off with vehicle e-bus fund mm -hmm. and building maintenance fund and legal fund. Mm -hmm. These are all reserve funds and the amount of money that's in them that are sitting there that, you know, we could access in an emergency or at need. Mm. Um, so you've always got a running kind of total of what's sitting in those reserve funds. So if you see a dramatic change sometime and you don't remember voting for it, that's mm -hmm. worth asking some questions about. So, um, okay. Right, and that's showing what we've spent so far. Yep. And typically, um, just for edification with the reserve funds, um, we will ask for the money um, from them to make sure that we've got to pay yeah, what we need to, but sign. we usually don't draw it until the end of the year and then only if we need to because we frequently have surplus. So I'm asking you for 44000 for a, a van if you approve it, we're going to pay for it out of the regular budget, and then at the end of the year, if we're in the black, we're not going to pull it from the reserve fund. So those <laughs> numbers may flop back. Yeah. The, the expended may come back into those reserve funds at the end. Okay. So we try not to tap them, even if you've approved it, unless we absolutely have to. Right. Yeah. We just need to make sure we're covered uh, if we're going out. For the whole pack or whatever. Excellent. That'll make sense. Uh, action items recap. Okay. Well, we have homework. Mm -hmm. If you could please watch that webinar and we can come and discuss it a bit. Um, again, it is the, and I can send the link, that will make it easier, but the governance core is the one we'll be discuss discussing next week. Um, I have uh, an action item to make these edits and, and uh, make sure that Kyle has it to be in the packet next week, yes. Once you do that, mm -hmm. do you want to check, if you still want me to check with the RTCC advisory group as to whether they can move? That would be a changing of the, that, mm -hmm. um, we need to change that their, meeting that, schedule. Yeah. So right. Let, let me know if it needs to or not. 
When is your next? Well, it wouldn't be before our next meeting. Cause that's when it is. Um, when is the next RTCC meeting? Why am I not? Yeah, next, next month. month. Oh, it's next month. So. Look at your next meeting. Eight. What you talked to them about changing? Yeah. 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 And then maybe we can still vote on it with an edit if we yeah. need to edit that one. Sure. Um, those headings. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, let's see. And then we've got some subcommittees to create mm. to figure out. Yes, think about being on yet another subcommittee. Subcommittees, please. Um, make a plan to meet, let Kyle know so we can warn them at least 48 hours in advance. So the um, ownership linkage will be meeting next Wednesday at 5.30 via Zoom link. Mm -hmm. Right, so I, I think it's most fair if yeah, we email, email that. Yeah. Great, great. So Thank Kyle, you. Katya will email that <laughs> to you. Um, Chelsea's going to email survey results with the legal language, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you were going to email Ron's yep. letter to the editor. Um, and we also have a superintendent evaluation meeting on Friday, Friday. at 12.30 that we have to be warned. Yeah, so I've got that on my notes first thing in the morning. Okay. Because the follow-up, we didn't quite get through the last piece today. Yeah, so you'll take care of the warning yeah. for that. Yeah. Okay. Good to go. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Here we go. We'll do the minutes from it. Excellent. Which I'll get down with okay. And whoever wants to join facilities. It's going to be a great time, guys. Yeah, if, if you said you no were going to talk to Rachel <laughs> about facilities mm -hmm. committee. Yes. Yeah. She and I will fight over it. <laughs> Sounds <Right>. good. <laughs> um, and I'll mention Sarah, Sarah and threw it out Sarah there. Will do yep. That. We're going to win a green building award. <laughs> uh, so we do have an executive <laughs> session on the agenda. Um, so I move to enter executive session for labor relations agreements with employees and with each other, Lawler and Lane. Okay. okay. Time. Time. Do I have? At 8.30. Exactly. And do I have a second? Oh, I'll second. Seconded by Megan. The motion was made by Katya. Thank you. At 8.30 to go into executive session. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Passes. We shall move into. Right. I'll switch. I'm going to switch the meeting.